Hey guys, uh, I'm Holly Oftedal. This is Josh Krentz. Uh, we are here at Windland Flats today and we're going to do a video about uh, flushing a donor cow and putting those embryos into recips. So Josh, if you could explain a little bit about the process of setting up this donor cow. This is Jewel. Yeah, absolutely, Holly. So, so flushing means that we're going to super ovulate the cow and then we're going to artificially inseminate and then we're going to take those embryos out. Mm -hmm. There's different types of embryo creation and so in this case, that's what flushing is referred to today. So, mm -hmm. so what we did with Jewel is uh, we first started by synchronizing her up just like we would synchronize a cow that we're trying to breed for heat and so for AI. And so what we did with Jewel is we used our seven day normal protocol where we do uh, Cedar GNRH on day one, Lutalize on day seven, and then after that, um, we then start doing uh, some shots of uh, some stimulant to help create more embryos in that component. Then we give her some more Lutalize to release all of those uh, oocytes, and then we AI'd her uh, several times. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a traditional AI where you can do it one time because there's like one oocyte you know, in the cow. And so uh, in this case, we're hoping for a lot of oocytes. Right. And so we AI, AI her several times. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, the WL Genesis, um, these embryos are actually set up for uh, export to Japan. Wow. So we're using CSS semen from, uh, from Genesis here with uh, WL Jewel to, to do that process. So awesome. that's the, the quick version. There's right. a little bit more to it, but that's yep. the quick version yep. of it. And we will be going into more detail today. Uh, Dr. Ashley is coming in just a few minutes to talk about that in more detail. Uh, Josh, you did mention that you AI Jewel multiple times. Um, did you do multiple, multiple times in one day or did you stretch that process a little bit longer? Yeah, no, it's a great question. So, so when you're doing a flush, you have to stretch the AI process mm -hmm. out because the uh, oocytes or eggs are, are releasing at different points in time. So, so standard, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to um, watch for standing heat and then breed, breed 12 hours later, breed 20 hours or another 20 or, or eight, so 12. So, so breed, 12 and then 20 after the initial heat process. So, awesome. so you're supposed to do a minimum three times. We actually did a little bit more than that just because okay. we wanted to make sure uh, that there were plenty of embryo development occurring in Jewel here. Awesome. And has Jewel been flushed before? Uh, we have not done a traditional flush on Jewel. Okay. Um, we have done uh, in vitro fertilization embryos with Jewel, which okay. is a whole other pro <laughs> process for another day. Yep, for sure. Awesome. So, I'm Dr. Ashley Swenson. Uh, I am the owner and sole practitioner at Midwest Embryo Transfer Service. So we have uh, been doing embryo transfer work as Midwest Embryo for over 30 years, but I've had the practice for eight. I work alongside my technician, Macy Betcher, and she helps with some of the lab work and scheduling and all of that side of the operation. Uh, and so with our business, we offer uh, complete embryo transfer services. And so today is one of the procedures we're going to go over is what people commonly refer to as conventional flushing, but we also offer IVF services uh, and export services as well. So we also do fresh transfers of embryos, we freeze embryos, uh, and we can thaw them and put them in. So basically whatever you need for embryo work, we can, we offer those services. Uh, well, thank you for coming out today, Ashley. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, we're gonna go over her equipment a little bit before we actually put it to use. So if you could explain to me what some of this is, that'd be great. Sure, so the procedure we're doing today is called a in vivo flush, or sometimes you hear people call it a conventional flush. And so what that means is that this cow, uh, Jewel, that we're working on today, uh, was actually artificially inseminated a week ago. And so we're collecting embryos that were fertilized in the cow. Um, and so this, that's the difference between this procedure and an IVF procedure. So an in vitro fertilization, the fertilization happens in a Petri dish. So it's probably one of the most common questions I get. So today we're doing the procedure where the cow is AI bred um, and we're collecting that seven day old embryo right from the cow herself. 
And so to do that, um, I have several pieces of equipment that I utilize. So the first one that I have is called a catheter. And um, this is kind of why it's, people call it a flush, because what we end up doing is we end up flushing uh, some media that I have in a bag here. We end up flushing that directly into the cow. And then uh, these catheters actually uh, have a little bit of a cuff at the end and some holes. So what I end up doing is, is using this catheter to seal off the tip of that uterine horn. And then media or flush fluid gets circulated in the uterus itself. Um, and we hook it up to a filter here, which you'll see in the demonstration. But then we actually capture those, those embryos in a filter. Uh, and then we'll end up searching for those in the lab. So you'll see me using um, what I call catheters. And we have a setup here with some tubing. Um, and then this black pouch here actually contains the filter where the embryos will be collected, where I can sort them out in the lab later and, and look for them. And your media is just a saline solution? The, the base of it is essentially like a saline solution. Yep, there's some other stabilizers and stuff, but the biggest thing is to have the right uh, pH for embryos, so it's not just water. Um, so we have to have the right nutrients and the right pH um, and the right concentration of, of goodies to make sure that those embryos can thrive after we take them out of the cow. Awesome. And this is a, uh, a non-sedative process. You know. yep. So the only thing we end up giving her is an epidural, mm -hmm. uh, much like what people would get. So we give that uh, right in the spine and what that does is just relaxes her because this procedure takes about 15 to 20 minutes. So it just makes her more comfortable throughout the whole process and allows me to manipulate her, her reproductive tract to get everything placed where we need it to and to make sure we harvest and manipulate those embryos back out of the uterus. There go. Yeah, so actually this is the epidural you're about to administer, correct? Yes. So an epidural goes in the spine. Uh, the spine has a nerve that runs through the center of it, as you can imagine. Um, and when we give that epidural, uh, we're targeting that nerve space. And it works a lot like uh, Novocaine does at the dentist's office. So it, it surrounds that nerve and just uh, makes everything from where the nerve starts and back go a little bit numb. So it lasts about uh, an hour depending on the dose that we give in each individual animal, but it, it works as quickly as a few seconds to in a couple minutes. It, it should, should take full effect. All right, whenever you're ready. So we've got Jewel all cleaned up here. One of the biggest things about embryo transfer is cleanliness, um, because if it can sustain and grow an embryo, it can sustain and grow bacteria, which is detrimental to pregnancy rates and the viability of embryos. So to start, what I end up doing is the catheter that we talked about. Um, there's a stylet that helps me guide the, guide the catheter, but what we end up doing is placing that catheter um, through the cervix, just like you would with an AI. Um, but then the difference is that we actually place that catheter uh, as far into the uterus as where um, we can circulate that media and get, capture those embryos. Mm -hmm. And so the next part that I'm, or the next step that I'm taking is I'm, um, I talked about that little bit of a cuff that seals off the, the tip of the uterus. So um, I'm actually just taking some air, taking some air and filling up that cuffs to seal off the uterus. And that way the only place that embryos can go um, now is in and out the end of this catheter, which is going to get hooked up to my different tubing sets here that are connected to my filter. Here, there's two different clamps on here, and one allows the media to go into the uterus. So when I open that up, I can feel that the, I can feel that the fluid is going into the uterus, and then I can let that fluid back out repeat this process until we run about 500 milliliters, half of, a, half of a liter of media in and out of the horn. Um, and that's roughly what we estimate uh, to be enough fluid to get all of the embryos out of the uterus. So on average,
average, um, beef cows generally produce a few more embryos than a dairy cow would. Um, so the national average tells us that between six and seven embryos is what we'll collect from your average beef, mature beef mm -hmm. cow. And so those different averages vary based on individual genetics. Um, it can vary by weather, environment, um, proximity to calving, uh, the age of the animal. So there's a lot of different factors that go into producing that average. Mm -hmm. um, and when we talk about the total number of embryos, that's uh, transferable embryos. So not every embryo we get will necessarily be uh, transferable. So that means it's maybe it, it didn't fertilize. Uh, maybe we have an unfertilized egg. Sometimes they fertilize, but they don't continue to grow and develop. Um, so we see them but and, and capture them, but um, not all of them are actually still alive and viable here now seven days later after artificial insemination. Ashley, can you actually brought up a, a really good subject on uh, the viability of embryos. Can you talk about the grading scale? Sure. Yep, so the embryos, we, we grade them on, a, on basically how old they are, and we also grade them on the quality of them. So you'll sometimes hear people say the stage and grade of embryos. So the stage tells us the age, and the quality tells us how good they are. And that's all relative to the likelihood of them making a pregnancy. So you'll have a grade one, two, three, or four. Um, grade ones are your best, and grade four means they're non-viable, so they're dead or unfertilized. Um, so there's about a difference of 10 to 15 percent uh, pregnancy rate between each of the stages. So from a one to a two to a three, you drop that 10 to 15 percent in what your expected pregnancy rate is. Um, and so for a fresh embryo, a, a quality one. Uh, embryo, we're expecting to see something like a 60 uh, to a 70 percent pregnancy rate on those, and so then you drop your pregnancy rate from there based on those subsequent lower quality of embryos. Uh, something else to add on to that is that uh, we can only freeze quality one and two embryos. Quality three, there's not enough of the cells um, in the embryo to survive the freezing process. So that's what I'm evaluating when I'm looking at the quality of the embryos is how perfect that embryo is. You know, how, how many of those cells actually are communicating with each other and actually growing and, and developing like they should into a calf or if, if some of those cells died and now the embryo is, is not taking on that perfect spherical shape that it should. And we'll be getting to take a look at those embryos in your grading process in your lab in a little bit. Yes. 